If a desktop is too big for you, but you still want to play VR chat, you should buy a laptop like mine. It should have an Intel i7 12700 or 12650, and the graphics card should be an NVIDIA 3070 Ti or 3070 regular. But if you want to save some money and lower your temperatures, then keep on watching for my 5 buying tips. Oh, and you can't miss tip number 3, or VR chat might kill your computer. <laughs> tip 1, if you want to save some money, you can get an Intel 11800 or an AMD 6800. The game performance is kind of similar, and if you find a good deal, you can save a couple hundred dollars. But me personally, I would still stick with the 12700 or 12650 and here's why. Not only do they offer basically best in class single core performance and L3 cache, two things which VRChat really cares about, but the multi-core performance is actually much better than the Intel 11800 and the AMD 6800. For me, when I think about like keeping a laptop for a couple years and doing virtual reality and doing video editing and doing graphic editing, like I don't mind paying a couple extra hundred dollars to get the best I can right now and keep it for four, five years, or maybe even more. So if you're like me and you want to invest more now to get better performance, then definitely pick up an Intel 12700 or 12650. But whatever you do, don't get the Intel 12800 because it's trash. It costs hundreds of dollars more and it's like barely stronger. Now on to the next tip. Tip number two. Only buy NVIDIA graphics cards, but watch out for their scam. Basically, here's how NVIDIA's laptop scam works. The desktop RTX 3080 is much stronger than the 3070, and it costs a couple hundred more dollars. There's nothing wrong with that. But the laptop 3080 is only a few percentage points stronger than the 3070, but it usually costs hundreds and hundreds of more dollars. So when you're paying the extra money, you're not getting the extra performance. Okay, well you're getting like 3%, but you know it's not worth it. So that's why I can only recommend the 3070 Ti and the 3070. It has the best price to performance ratio, and the reason for that is because VRChat loves something called VRAM. And if you don't know what VRAM is, it's basically the place on your graphics card where people's skin and their clothes are stored. So when you're an instance full of people, you're gonna really appreciate your 8GB of VRAM. And considering that NVIDIA's cheaper 3000 series, such as a 3060 and a 3050, have less VRAM, I don't really recommend those unless you don't mind paying less money, but like, lagging. I don't know. 3070 Ti and 3070 laptops are not that expensive. And if you grab one right now, I really think it'll last you for the next four years. And also, don't even consider an AMD graphics card laptop. Like, I actually bought one before I got my current laptop, and it didn't even work. Anytime I tried to load up a game, it would just immediately crash. I couldn't play VR chat, I couldn't play League of Legends, I couldn't even play like calculator. It was so bad. I know some of you guys in the comments are gonna be like, well, I have an AMD graphics card laptop and it works perfectly. I can play Cyberpunk at 69 million FPS. But just talking from my experience, that shit didn't even start up one game. Tip number three. Don't let VR chat kill your computer. So here's the red pill. You can buy the best laptop on the market with a mobile 3090 Ti and the, the 12,969. But in the end, it's going to be throttled by heat. Because think about it, when you have these like powerful parts working really hard inside that like teeny tiny little chassis, it's gonna become hotter than the depths of hell. And when that happens, your parts are programmed to get really, really slow so that they can cool down. Which means that even though you spent a lot of money, your computer is now slow as a slug. So how do we stop overheating? The answer is you get a laptop cooler stand, but you can't get any laptop cooler stand. Like look at the first one I bought, it's such a piece of shit. Like yeah, it looks big, it has a really big fan, but all the air that it's blowing, it's not getting into the computer parts. It's mostly just hitting the bottom of the computer and then like spreading out. So how do we get the air to go directly inside the vents? Well the answer is, some really smart guy actually invented a cooler that can do that. So this cooler, it has like a foam border around the base, so that the air, it can't go out the sides. The only way the air can get out is through your vents. And let me tell you, this thing is like magic. Like have you guys ever put your hand in front of your vent while you're gaming? It feels like you can like dry your hair with it. But when I have the fan on and then I put my hand in front of the vent, it feels really like good. It feels like room temperature. It sounds unbelievable, but I think it's because there's a seal. All the air is like whooshing through your graphics cards. And that's why when I'm playing VR or any graphically demanding game, I have this thing set on full blast. Because heat makes your computer parts expand, and when you turn your computer off, it contracts again. And when your computer is like expanding and contracting like multiple times a day, that is how your computer breaks down in a year or two. If you guys have ever had a laptop break within like one or two years, Smash that fucking like button. So let me show you my temperatures from literally this morning. So I was in a world with a couple of my friends, and our avatars are crazy. We have like 10 different outfits with 400,000 polygons, and we have 500 fizz bones. Like our avatars can bring anyone's laptop to their knees. And as you see from this video, I'm not even going over 70 degrees. That is insane for a laptop, because think about it. This thing is as thin as like a pancake, and it has like gaming hardware inside. By all respects, it should be an oven. But thanks to the laptop stand cooler, it's really comfy. So if you want to buy this laptop stand cooler, or any of the laptop specs I mentioned in the video, then open the description and then click or tap the links and it'll take you right to Amazon. If you do decide to make a purchase, then I make a really small commission and it costs you nothing extra. So that's helpful. Anyway, tip number four. If you just want to play on desktop, then you can get away with a 3050, which can be found for really, really cheap. I think it could be half the price of a 3070 machine or less. And if you want to know why flat screen mode is so much easier to run than VR mode, then here's why. So in VR mode, your graphics card has to render 
a really high resolution view for each one of your eyes because that's how real life works. Each of your eyes sees a different angle of the real world and it's really, really high definition. But for flat screen mode, it just has to make like a 1080p screen. It's super, super simple to run. And that's why you can run it on a cheapo 3050 laptop. But it's not like perfect. You're still gonna lag if you have a ton of people in the room because the 3050 only has four gigabytes of VRAM. Personally, I would recommend going for at least a 3060, which has six gigabytes, or at least a 3070, which has eight gigabytes of VRAM. But I get it. Not everyone has really nice parents like me who will buy them like a one to $2,000 laptop. So if your parents are cheap and they'll only get you a cheapo laptop, then the 3050 will be just fine for running VR chat. The most important thing for you is to get your ass in here. Just make sure that whatever laptop you buy, it says NVIDIA RTX on it. Because if it just says Intel HD graphics or Ryzen G graphics, that means it has an integrated graphics card. Meaning that the graphics is inside your CPU, so it's really small and has no cooling. But if the Amazon page says NVIDIA RTX on it, that means that it has a dedicated graphics card, which has its own heat pipes and its own fan, so you can see everyone's half-naked furry avatars in beautiful HD. Ah, uh, I love the Christmas season. Anyway, next tip. So whenever you graduate from college or your working situation gets more stable, I really think you should upgrade to a desktop. And the reason is because it's stronger, it's faster, and it lasts longer. And if you think space is an issue, you don't need a huge one, you can build or buy a really small and cute one. They exist. And the thing about laptops and desktops is that they're not really competing. Actually, they complement each other. For example, if I just want to like chill in bed or I'm doing content creation, I play in my bedroom on my desktop. Or if I want to play in my wide living room and use my full body tracking to jump and run around, I can play on my laptop. And also, if I go on a family trip, I can also play on my laptop. Yeah, that's right. I play VR chat inside the hotel room and inside the airport. I'm kind of based. Anyway, if you're interested in buying or building your own desktop, or if you just want a window shop, then you should watch this other video that I made.